I'm not the kind of person who believes in all that cryptozoology stuff. But what happened to me in the Okafinoki Swamp in Georgia changed that. The swamp's a weird place, you know? It's like a world of its own, with all the water, the trees, and the sounds at night. I was there for a camping trip with my friend. We had driven there from the Atlanta area where we lived. The first day was just normal camping stuff, setting up the tent, fishing, the usual. But as the sun began to set, things started getting weird. The swamp has this way of amplifying sounds at night, making them seem closer than they are. I heard splashes and rustles that made me think of gators, which to be honest, wouldn't have been surprising. But this one night, things were different. It was our third night out there. We, that's me and my buddy Mark, were sitting by the fire, just talking about life. The fire was burning low, and the sounds of the swamp seemed louder than usual. Then, we heard this sound. Not like a gator, though. It was a strange, hissing sound, but deeper, more throaty. We thought maybe it was just a big gator, so we shone our flashlight towards the sound. And man, what we saw wasn't any gator. This thing, it was standing by the water's edge, maybe about 30 feet away from us. It was tall, like really tall, and covered in these dark, scaly-looking things. It had these bright, yellow eyes that kind of glowed in the flashlight beam. Mark and I were frozen. This thing, it looked right at us. I remember thinking its face was sort of human-like, but all wrong. Like a lizard's and a person's face mashed together. It didn't move, just stared at us. The air was heavy, thick with this feeling of dread. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Then this thing, this creature, it made a sound. Not the hissing we heard before, but this low, rumbling growl. It sent chills down my spine. That's when Mark whispered, we gotta get out of here now. But we couldn't move. We were just stuck there, staring at this. This reptilian thing. It was like our feet were glued to the ground. My heart was pounding so loud I thought it would burst. Then, out of nowhere, the creature took a step towards us. It wasn't a big step, but enough to jolt us out of our trance. Mark was the first to react. He grabbed my arm and hissed, Run! We bolted. I've never run that fast in my life. Our camp was a mess, but we didn't care. We just grabbed what we could, the keys, our phones, and a flashlight and ran to the truck. I honestly can't even believe we were able to think well enough to grab those things. The whole time I kept looking back, expecting to see that thing chasing us. But there was nothing, just the sounds of the swamp and our heavy breathing. We got to the truck, and Mark fumbled with the keys, his hands shaking. He finally got the door open and we jumped inside, locking the doors immediately. I remember my hands were trembling so badly I could barely hold the flashlight. Mark turned the ignition, and the truck roared to life. We just drove off, leaving all of our camping gear behind. The drive out of the swamp was a blur. We were both in shock, not speaking, just trying to process what we'd seen. Once we got to a more populated area, we stopped at a diner. It was early morning, just as the sun was coming up. We sat there, in a booth by the window, looking outside and sitting there in silence. Did you see its eyes? Mark finally asked, breaking the silence. They were like, like nothing I've ever seen. I just nodded. The image of those glowing yellow eyes was burned into my mind. We talked about going to the authorities, but what would we say? That we saw a reptilian creature in the swamp? They'd think we were crazy. After a while, we decided not to tell anyone. We paid for our coffee and headed back home, a sense of unease hanging over us. But the story doesn't end there. In the days following our encounter, strange things began to happen. I started having these vivid dreams about the swamp and the creature. In the dreams, I was back in the swamp, but it was different, darker, more sinister, and the creature was always there watching me with those glowing eyes. 
I tried to brush it off as just stress or my imagination running wild. But then, Mark called me one night, his voice shaky. He said he was having the same dreams, and he felt like he was being watched, even during the day. We met up to talk about it, both of us feeling on edge. It was like the encounter in the swamp had opened a door to something we couldn't close. We needed answers, but we had no idea where to start. So, we started digging for information about the swamp and any similar encounters. We spent days going through old newspapers, online forums, anything that might give us a clue. But we found nothing about a creature like the one we saw. One night, I was up late, scrolling through some forum posts, when I stumbled upon a thread about the swamp. It was mostly just typical stuff, but one comment caught my eye. It was from a user who claimed to have seen something similar to what Mark and I had encountered. They mentioned a specific part of the swamp, an area known as the Dark Water. The next day, I showed it to Mark. We were both skeptical, but we couldn't ignore it. We decided to go back to the swamp, to this dark water area. It was a crazy idea, but we needed answers. We arrived at the swamp a few days later, but we made sure to go during the day this time. The dark water was a secluded part of the swamp, far from the usual tourist spots. It had a strange, eerie feeling to it that we both felt. We spent hours trudging through the swamp in our waders, the water sometimes up to our waists. We saw all kinds of wildlife, but nothing out of the ordinary. As the sun began to set, we started to think that maybe we were just chasing shadows. That's when we heard it, the same guttural hiss from our first encounter. We froze, looking around frantically. Then, out of the murky water, the creature emerged. It was just as terrifying as we remembered those yellow eyes piercing through the dim light. But this time, it wasn't alone. There were others, three or four of them, emerging from different parts of the swamp. We were surrounded. The creatures didn't attack. They just watched us, their eyes never leaving ours. Needless to say, we didn't wait around to see what they wanted. We turned and ran, splashing through the water, not caring where we were going as long as it was away from them. We finally made it back to the truck, out of breath, and scared out of our minds. On the drive back, we didn't talk much. What was there to say? We had seen something impossible, something that shouldn't exist. But it did, and we had no explanation for it. Strangely, in the weeks that followed, the dreams stopped, and things slowly went back to normal but the memory of those creatures stayed with us. I still think about it sometimes, especially when I'm near a body of water. I can't help but wonder what they were and why they were there. We never went back to the swamp, and we never told anyone about what we saw. It sounds crazy, I know, but it happened, and it's something I'll never forget. So here I am, finally writing in, because after what happened to me in Algonquin Park, I just had to share it. I'm still shaking a bit as I type this, so a bit about me. I'm just your average guy, but I love camping. I've been doing solo trips since I was 18. This time I decided to hit up Algonquin Park in Ontario. It's huge, with deep forests and amazing wildlife. The perfect place to get away from it all, or so I thought. I arrived early in the morning and set up my camp near a small lake, the kind of spot that's far enough from the main trails to be peaceful, but not so far that I'd be completely isolated. The first couple of nights were normal, just the usual sounds of the woods, nothing out of the ordinary. But on the second night, things got weird. I was woken by this odd sound. It was like a howl, but deeper than any wolf or coyote I've ever heard. At first, I brushed it off as just some weird animal noise. You hear all sorts of things in the woods, right? The next day was normal again, hiking, fishing, the usual stuff. But as the sun started to set, I got this eerie feeling. You know, that prickly sensation on the back of your neck 
Like you're being watched? Yeah, that. I was cooking dinner when I heard rustling in the bushes nearby. Probably a raccoon, I thought. They're always trying to steal food. But then, the bushes rustled again, louder this time, and I heard heavy footsteps. Not the light. Scampering ones you'd expect from small animals. Curiosity got the better of me, and I grabbed my flashlight to check it out. That's when I saw it. This creature, standing on the edge of the tree line, illuminated by my flashlight. It was like nothing I've ever seen before. Tall, easily seven feet, covered in dark fur, but its eyes, its eyes were the most terrifying part. They glowed in the light, a deep, unnatural red, and its face, it was canine, but distorted, more human than animal. It had these long, sharp teeth that seemed to glint in the flashlight. I was frozen in fear, my heart pounding in my chest. We just stared at each other for what felt like an eternity. Then, it let out this howl, the same one I heard the night before. It was so loud, so close, it felt like it vibrated in my chest. The creature then turned and vanished into the woods, the brush crashing as it moved. I didn't sleep that night. I kept the fire burning bright and stayed awake, clutching my hatchet, jumping at every little sound. As soon as the sun came up, I packed my gear and hiked back to my car, not stopping once to look back. I've never believed in stuff like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, but after what I saw, I don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, what was that thing? A dog man? I've heard stories, but I always thought they were just that stories. Then, the thing let out this howl, the same one I heard the night before. It was so loud, so close, it felt like it vibrated in my chest. My ears were ringing, and for a second, I couldn't hear anything else. I thought I was going to pass out from fear. I don't know what came over me, but something inside told me to run. Not back to my tent, but towards the lake. Maybe I thought it wouldn't follow me there, or maybe I wasn't thinking at all. I just ran, flashlight in one hand, hatchet in the other, crashing through the underbrush. The sounds of the forest were chaotic. I could hear the creature behind me, its heavy footsteps thudding against the ground. It was chasing me. Every rational part of my brain was screaming that I was about to die, torn apart by some monster in the middle of the Canadian wilderness. I burst through the tree line and stumbled onto the rocky shore of the lake. The cold night air hit me, and for a moment, it felt refreshing, like a splash of reality. I turned around, shining my light back towards the woods, expecting to see the creature lunging at me. But it wasn't there. The forest was silent, eerily so. No crickets, no rustling leaves, nothing. Just the gentle lap of water against the shore and my own heavy breathing. I waited, expecting it to come crashing out at any moment, but it didn't. It was like it had just vanished. I didn't dare move. I was too scared to go back to my tent for my stuff, too scared to even yell for help. I just stood there, by the lake, until the first light of dawn started to creep over the horizon. As soon as the sun was up, I made my way back to my campsite, half expecting it to be destroyed. But everything was as I'd left it, untouched. That was almost more unsettling. If this thing was just an animal, why didn't it tear through my stuff? Why did it chase me and then just disappear? I packed up as fast as I could and hiked out of there. I didn't even bother with the fish I'd caught the day before. I just wanted to get out, get away from whatever that thing was. On the hike back, every little sound made me jump. I kept looking over my shoulder, expecting to see that creature following me. But I didn't see it again. It was like it had just vanished back into the forest. When I finally got to my car, I felt a relief like I've never felt before. I threw my gear in the back and drove without stopping until I was well out of the park. I've been trying to make sense of it all ever since. Was it a dog man? Some undiscovered animal? Or maybe I just imagined the whole thing. But it felt so real, so terrifyingly real. I don't know what to believe. And that's where I'm at now, 
sharing this story with you guys. I'm not sure what to do next. Do I report it? Do I try to forget it ever happened? I just don't know. All right, so let me tell you about this crazy thing that happened to me. It was in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. You've probably heard of it, famous for the whole Mothman legend. Well, I was always skeptical about these kinds of things. I mean, come on, a man-sized moth flying around? Sounds like a bad horror movie. But what I saw, let's just say, it changed my mind. So it was a couple of months ago. I was visiting Point Pleasant for this work thing. Nothing exciting. I had an evening free, so I thought, why not check out the Mothman Museum? You know, for laughs. The museum was this quirky little place, filled with newspaper clippings, odd-looking props, and even an eerie statue of the Mothman himself. The locals seemed pretty into it, talking about sightings and stuff. I just smiled and nodded, thinking it was all good fun. After the museum, I grabbed some dinner and then decided to take a walk by the old TNT area. That's where most of the Mothman sightings happened back in the 60s. It's this creepy, abandoned place with these old igloo-like storage structures where they used to keep explosives during World War II. The sun was setting and the whole area had this eerie vibe. I remember thinking it would be the perfect place for a horror movie set. I was just walking and enjoying the creepy atmosphere when I heard this weird noise. It was like a low humming sound. At first I thought it was just the wind, but it got louder and more, I don't know, urgent. I looked around trying to figure out where it was coming from. That's when I saw it. Man, I still get goosebumps thinking about it. There on top of one of the TNT storage domes was this thing. It was big, like really big. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It had these huge wings, which it was flapping slowly, and these two red eyes that seemed to glow in the dark. I froze. All those stories I'd heard in the museum came rushing back to me. Mothman. I know how it sounds, but I swear I wasn't drunk or anything. I was stone cold sober, and there was no mistaking what I was looking at. This thing, whatever it was, just stared at me for what felt like an eternity. Then without warning, it let out this blood-curdling screech and took off into the sky. The force of its wings knocked me back a few steps. I was freaked out, totally freaked out. My heart was pounding in my chest and I could barely catch my breath. I didn't know what to do, so I just ran. My feet were hitting the ground hard as I bolted through the underbrush, branches slapping against my face. I didn't dare look back. The image of those glowing red eyes was etched into my mind. When I finally got back to my car, I was a mess. I was sweating, my hands were shaking, and I could barely get the key into the ignition. Once I did, I floored it out of there. I kept checking the rearview mirror, half expecting to see that thing chasing after me. As I drove, I tried to rationalize what I had seen. Maybe it was just a really big bird or some kind of drone, but deep down, I knew it wasn't. It was too big, too unnatural. I had seen the Mothman, the same creature that haunted this town for decades. I couldn't sleep that night. Every little noise made me jump. I kept seeing those red eyes every time I closed mine. The next day, I decided I needed to talk to someone about it. I went back to Point Pleasant, this time heading straight for the Mothman Museum. I figured if anyone would believe me, it would be them. The museum was quiet when I walked in. I approached the person at the counter, a middle-aged woman with kind eyes. I must have looked a mess because she immediately asked if I was all right. I told her what I had seen the night before, expecting her to laugh or dismiss it, but she didn't. She listened intently, nodding as I described the creature and the way it had taken off into the sky. When I finished, she told me that I wasn't the first to have such an encounter. She said that sightings had been on the rise again, just like in the 60s. She suggested that maybe the Mothman was some kind of guardian of Point Pleasant, a warning of danger or change. 
I spent the rest of the day talking to locals. It turned out that a lot of them had stories about the Mothman or knew someone who did. Some were skeptical, sure, but many believed in it as strongly as they believed in anything. It was a part of their town's identity, their history. That evening, I went back to the TNT area. I don't know why I did it. Curiosity, I guess. Or maybe I was looking for some kind of closure. I sat in my car for a long time, watching the sun set over the eerie landscape. But nothing happened. No humming sound. No glowing red eyes. Just the quiet of the night. I left Point Pleasant the next day, but what I experienced stayed with me. I've been doing a lot of reading since then, trying to understand what I saw. Some say the Mothman is a cryptid, others believe it's an alien or a supernatural being. I don't have the answers, but I know what I saw was real. Hi everyone. I'm a long-time lurker, first-time poster here. Never in a million years did I think I'd have something to share, but here I am, still trying to wrap my head around what I saw. I live in a small town surrounded by dense forests. It's the kind of place where the most exciting event is the high school football game on Friday nights. I work at the local diner, serving up pancakes and burgers. This whole thing happened last week. I was closing up the diner, which means I was out by midnight. The roads are usually deserted at that time, just the way I like it. No traffic, no rush, just me and my pickup truck. As I was driving down this long stretch of road that cuts through the forest, my headlights caught something up ahead. At first, I thought it was a person, maybe a drunk guy who'd wandered off from one of the bars. But as I got closer, I realized this was no person. It stood there, right at the edge of the forest, where the shadows met my headlights. This thing, it was like something out of a sci-fi movie. Tall, easily over six feet, with scales that shimmered in the light like a snake's skin. It had these piercing yellow eyes that seemed to look right into me. I swear, it felt like it could see my soul or something. I slowed down, not sure what I was seeing. Was this a prank? some kind of weird costume, but then it moved, and any thought of this being a person in a suit vanished. It was too fluid, too real, the way it cocked its head, studying me as I studied it. Its hands or claws were long and slender, ending in sharp points. It just stood there, not making a sound, and that's when I noticed its breathing, slow, deliberate breaths that made its chest rise and fall. This thing was alive, no doubt about it. So, there I was, alone on this road, with nothing but the sound of my idling truck breaking the silence. This creature, this reptilian being, it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It wasn't just the size or the scales that struck me, but also the way it moved and observed me, almost with a sense of intelligence and curiosity. As I sat there, I noticed more details. Its skin wasn't just scaly, it had a texture to it, like a mosaic of green and black, with parts that were a deep, iridescent blue that shimmered in the headlights. The eyes, though, were what really got to me. They weren't just glowing, they had a look to them that felt almost human, like I could understand what it was thinking by looking at its eyes. It's crazy, but for a moment, I felt like it was trying to communicate something. I also remember that the air around us felt charged, like that feeling before a storm hits. I remember my hand was shaking as I reached for my phone, thinking I could get a picture, but I couldn't take my eyes off it long enough to look away. That's when it tilted its head, almost like it was curious about what I was doing. It's hard to describe, but there was a moment where I felt like we were just two beings, encountering each other without any issues. No fear, no aggression, just acknowledgement that each of us existed in this world. But then, everything shifted. I noticed it sniff the air, its nostrils flaring slightly. That's when the atmosphere changed again. It wasn't threatening, but it was like it had made some decision. In one quick motion, 
It turned its body, giving me a full view of the way that it was built. It was muscular, and I could tell that it was built for power and speed, with a tail that trailed behind it, balancing its movements. As it turned to go back into the forest, it paused and looked over its shoulder at me one last time. I can't explain it, but I felt like it was making sure I wasn't going to follow. Then, it disappeared into the trees. The brush didn't even seem to move. It was like the forest swallowed it whole. The rest of the drive home was a blur. My mind was racing, trying to make sense of what I'd seen. I kept looking in my mirrors, half expecting it to emerge from the darkness behind me. But there was nothing, just the empty road and the night. When I got home, that's when the fear really set in. What if it followed me? What if it wasn't alone? Even though it didn't seem like it wanted to hurt me, the whole thing was still very worrying. Now, every shadow seemed like it could be hiding something. I didn't sleep at all, just waited for the sun to come up, hoping it would make everything seem less terrifying. I've gone over it a million times in my head since then. Was it a guardian of the forest or just a curious creature? Why did it reveal itself to me? I've read about cryptids and strange encounters, but nothing that quite matches what I saw. It feels like I've been given a glimpse into something incredible, something beyond our understanding. And now I'm sharing this with you all. Maybe someone here has had a similar experience or knows what I saw. Or maybe this is just my own encounter, unique and unexplainable. Either way, it's changed me. The world feels bigger, more mysterious, and I can't help but wonder what else is out there, hiding in the dark, just beyond our sight.